Hi, this is Bob from Insidium. On today's top tip video, we're going to be using NX Upres. Now, normally this tool is for adding loads more particles to an existing particle scene, but we're going to be using NX Upres kind of stylistically to artistically create an effect that we can't make without it. And we're going to make some really interesting particle trails. We're also going to be using NX Constraints. So let's start the clock and we'll get going. In our scene then we have this animating sphere emitting these particles. The sphere is animating because it has a vibrate tag on. We've set it to regular pulse and we've got some amplitude in the X axis, which is why it's moving. Then the emitter, we're obviously emitting from that sphere. So let's go to the object tab. It's set to object emitter shape, referencing the sphere, emitting from the polygon area. Then in the emission tab, we've got it set to ret. Uh, we've got it set to rate. We have a lifespan of 60 frames, birth rate of 50 uh, per frame, and a speed of zero. But we're getting a bit of motion in our particles because we're getting some of the velocity from the sphere. Because in our motion inheritance tab, we have this active with a speed blend of, let's put that down to 50, nice round number. Okay, so now what we wanna do is connect these particles and we're gonna use constraints to do that. So let's go to Insidium, X Particles, Nexus, Constraints. We're going to up the iterations. It's always good for accuracy. My starting point's three. And then we're gonna add some birth constraints and this connects each particle with a spring. And what it's saying is, any one particle can connect with up to, let's put it on 13 other particles, as long as they're within a radius of, let's put this 30, let's put a really weak stiffness so it's a dead stretchy spring, and then we don't want any breaking at all actually, so let's just go on the break type, let's put it on none. So now when we hit play, you'll see that the particles are obviously connected now, they're moving together as a kind of a, a body of particles rather than just individual things. So now we're going to add a bit of uh, turbulence to get some movement going in here. Let's just make that sphere invisible. We'll go to Insidium, X Particles, Nexus, NX Turbulence, and let's just hit play and keep it going. Uh, I'm a big fan of Voronoise, so I'm going to go with that one. Let's put this, going to put this pretty strong actually, but then we're going to calm it down. Let's reduce that scale down a little bit. Let's reduce the frequency at which that is animating through way down. And we're going to increase the octaves way up. Now, when we do this, we might lose some of these really large swirls. Yeah, you see how when we increase the octaves, we've lost those big licky swirls. So to get some of those back, we'll reduce the persistence so the strength doesn't travel through all of those octaves. And this will bring back, yeah, look, that's bringing back some of that large swirly stuff. Okay, that'll do. So what we're going to do now is cache this very low particle count sim. Let's go to Insidium, X Particles, Cache. This is caching external files to my documents. Uh, I'm going to take Compress Cache on Build off, which means it'll cache much quicker, but the file size will be bigger. And this will run through. So we're caching, what, 700 frames here, and it's only taking, that's going to be, what, seven or eight seconds. So that's pretty much done. So now that's cached, we can actually delete out those now obviously if you're working in production you'd keep these in case you wanted to go back but just to tidy things up we'll get rid of those modifiers and now we can just play through these cached particles so now what we're going to do is up res these cached ones so to do that we'll go to insidium x particles nexus nx up res this requires two emitters a source which we'll use our cached ones and a destination. Now the destination wants to be set up in exactly the same way as the source, but just emitting more particles. So let's just duplicate our source one. We can get rid of this cache object. And in the this one, we're gonna make a couple of changes. In the emission tab, we're going to reduce the lifespan down to say 40, with a variation of say 10. We will put the birth rate up to say 1000, and let's go to the display, and because we're going to have lots of particles, we want a small display mode, so let's change it from squares to, to uh, not ticks, to dots. We'll change the color mode to gradient parameter, and we'll map the speed of the particles, auto, to, let's choose a gradient instead of that default blue and white, this purple one. Okay, so now we need to go to our up res, and we now have our destination emitter set up. Let's drag it in. So let's just hit play. In fact, we'll make the original particles invisible. 
Let's hit play. And now we're emitting our up res particles based on that data from the original ones. And what it's doing is it's using the nearest three particles and blending their velocity. So the higher this number, the smoother and more accurate your sim is going to be, but it'll take longer to simulate. Let's try it up on maybe seven and you get this result. Now this may be fine, This may you may be pleased with this, um, and that's okay, you can go with it. But I like to add a little bit of position as well. Now with position you'll see that the simulation collapses in on itself because the particles share a similar position. So what we can do, I mean it does look cool, and that might work for your scene, but we can reduce this strength down, which will kind of reintroduce a little bit of the volume back into that sim. So that's looking really cool. So now that we've got this and it's looking nice, we can pump way more particles into this and cache it out. So let's go to our destination emitter, emission, and let's increase that birth rate from 1,000 to 5,000, and we'll recache. So let's go to the cache. And what we want to do is build the cache, but this is a really important bit. We want to hit continue because then it's not going to attempt to recache the already cached base particles. It's just going to cache the up -rest ones. So let's hit continue. Now this is going to take longer because obviously we're pumping in way more particles into the scene. And then those particles are having to interpolate all of that position and velocity data. So we've, we've um, exponentially increased the calculations required here. So what I'll do is I'll pause it. I'll come back to you when it's finished. We'll have a look at the result and see how long it took. Okay, that's finished, and the cache took just under five minutes. Let's just switch off our NX up res, hit play, and you can see now we have got, yeah, look, amazing detail to that. That particle trail system is looking fantastic. And this is so much better than just using a turbulence uh, because it feels much more like kind of an organic, coherent body of particles rather than lots of individual particles just being moved around by that noise. A really nice technique, very stylish, pretty simple to set up.